Hey everyone, welcome. I'm Dr. Lon Schiffbauer, and today we're talking about how to build authentic relationships with our employees. This is key to having a good, strong organizational culture. So with that in mind, let's jump right on in. So first, a disclaimer about authentic relationships with our employees. That doesn't mean we have to be BFFs with everyone. OK, so an example I like to use here is uh, Adam Savage and uh, Jamie Heineman. These are the myth busters for those of you that are old like me. Right. Um, they work together beautifully, fantastically. They had a hugely successful show, Mythbusters, on the Discovery Channel for years and years and years. And they work together marvelously. But they were pretty animate about saying, listen, we're not friends. We're co-workers, all right? They had a good, strong co-working relationship. Now, what's a relationship? The way in which two or more people regard and behave toward each other. Okay, so if they're not friends, because they sure look like friends, well, what are they? Well, heck, you know, they have respect for one another. They treat each other with dignity. They admire their skills and their capabilities. They're loyal to their, their show, to one another. They have concern and understanding for one another, dedication and appreciation. So, yeah, you don't need to be best bosom buddies to be able to feel all these things toward your employees, your managers, your co-workers, what have you. Okay, so with that in mind, I want to first share with you my kind of unified theory of human need. All right, it's not documented. I haven't done the research yet. It's not published. Nevertheless, I want to share this with you. What it basically comes down to is I believe that at our core, we all have a basic need to feel validated, to be validated. Deep inside, people want others to validate their decisions, contributions, and aspirations. That's what we want. We're not really that complicated. I'm, I'm fond of saying we're so complicated that at the end of the day, it's pretty darn simple. Okay. Well, what do I mean by this? Well, think about the decisions we make, right? A decision is a conclusion or resolution reached after consideration. Well, that consideration means that we employed our mental faculties, our experience, our insights, our values to making that decision. We invested ourselves in that decision. Contribution, the part a person played in bringing about a result or helping something to advance bringing about a result. This is our work. This is our accomplishment. This is the result of what we've done. We have invested ourselves in this, and we want to be validated through it. Finally, aspiration, a hope or ambition of achieving something. Ambition of achieving something. Once again, we are always looking for validation in all that we do. And so, no, we don't need to be best friends. We just need to validate our contributions, our aspirations, our decisions, our, you know, raisined etra in the organization. Okay. All these things are intensely personal, reflect our sense of self-worth. I'm telling you, self-worth is everything. All right. So, what we're going to talk about today are five ways that you can build authentic relationships with your employees. We're going to talk about trust and vulnerability, communication and transparency, allowing for autonomy, validating by listening, and allowing for failure. So let's jump right into it. First of all, trust and vulnerability. Basically, leave the Superman cape at home. I know as, as organizational leaders, as managers, and so on and so forth, we kind of feel this pressure to be awesome and to be revered and looked upon with admiration and awe, right? And so we're constantly wearing the Superman cape. Uh-uh, no. 
Trust and vulnerability is really key. I'm going to read from three books here from three distinguished authors on the topic, Brene Brown, Stephen Covey, and Patrick Lencioni. Let's go ahead and start with Brene Brown. She says, leaders must either invest a reasonable amount of time to attending fears and feelings or squander an unreasonable amount of time trying to manage ineffective, unproductive behavior. Yeah, listen, fears, anxieties, trepidation, concern, these are normal things among the workforce. And as managers, we need to help navigate these difficult feelings and emotions or uh, dealing with ineffective and unproductive behavior. Okay, so Speed of Trust by Stephen Covey. Trust is one of the most powerful forms of motivation and inspiration. People want to be trusted. They respond to trust. They thrive on trust. Absolutely. Whatever a situation, we need to get good at establishing, extending, and restoring trust, not as a manipulative technique, but as the most effective way of relating to and working with others, and the most effective way of getting results. Okay? So, yes, trust, vulnerability, dealing with fears. Finally, Patrick Lencioni, naked leaders don't enjoy being wrong. They just realize that it's an inevitability. So, yes, you're going to be wrong a good many times, right? But that doesn't mean we need to try to hide when we are wrong or defend it or what have you. We need to be vulnerable and trust that people will trust us as we trust them. Okay, so as an exercise, spend some time thinking about this. Just meditate upon this idea. If I make myself vulnerable to others, they will think less of me, lose faith in my abilities, and potentially use my vulnerability against me. Think about that for a while and write down your results. Have you experienced this? Do you believe it? Do you think this will indeed come to pass? Write down your thoughts and feelings regarding this assertion and then share those thoughts and feelings with somebody whom you trust so that you can have a conversation about this and really kind of find your center when it comes to trust and vulnerability. Okay, next one. Communication and transparency. Basically, we want no inner circles and secret meetings and smoke-filled rooms. We need to be open and transparent with our employees in order to gain and maintain that sense of trust. So one way to think about this is from a book called The Outward Mindset. One of the ways the leader-led distinction shows up is through outward manifestation of status that only the preferred can enjoy. Any practice or policy that communicates to others that they don't really matter like we do can end up creating barriers. Yes, you don't want to send the message that I'm special, I'm unique, I enjoy this higher level of prestige and position, whereas you rabble, well, okay, maybe you too can one day attain our heights. No, 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 no. This is going to really damage our ability to build authentic relationships. Okay. Now, another way to think about this is that one-on-one interactions initiated from both sides. Let me explain what I mean. Oftentimes, folks say, you know what? I have an open-door policy, which kind of suggests that, hey, Anytime you want to come speak with me, my door is open. You come to me, come to my knee, and I will bequeath upon you knowledge and information and insight. Like, you're the one that they're supposed to go to, right? Why aren't you going to them, right? Why isn't this open door policy both ways? That's the way we need to approach it. So, as an exercise, consider these things. Practice management by walking around. 
Every once in a while, leave your office, leave your cubicle, leave wherever you are, walk around, just kind of visit with folks. You're not checking in. You're not, you know, micromanaging. You're just saying, hey, how's it going? What you working on? Anything I can do to help? Hey, have you heard about this new thing going on? Hey, do you have any information about this? What have you heard? Actually be one of the guys, right? Management by walking around. Next, next time you have a business problem to solve, get the perspective of your team. Actually pull people together and say, hey, I really want to get your input on this. I'm kind of struggling with this business problem and I want to get your insights. I want to get your perspective. I mean, you don't have all the answers and trust me, they have a lot. They have a lot of insight. They have a lot of experience. They can help you out by really showing that it is a team. You're going to really win over their their confidence and you're going to seem credible and you're once again going to seem vulnerable and trustworthy, okay, as well as transparent. Next one, allow for autonomy. Allow people the space to make decisions, make contributions, and exercise their aspirations. This is really important. So, quoting again the outward mindset, without realizing it, too many leaders assume that the role of leadership is control, is to control. Organizations that perpetuate this leader-led distinction tend to be riddled with justification and blame. You're not there to control your people. You're there to guide, to give resources, to provide support, not control. You really want to allow for a sense of autonomy among your folks. That's going to help you build an authentic relationship. So here's an exercise to consider. Think of a decision or an authority you can delegate to an employee and give them full autonomy to solve it in the way they see best. Give it to them. Let them do it. Think of a time an employee exercised autonomy and recognized them for their contributions, right? You want to practice the old adage that what gets measured gets done, what gets rewarded gets done. If you observe where an employee you know, exercise some initiative and some autonomy and came about with a great result, recognize them and reward them for it. Okay, next one, validation by listening. To listen is a verb. It's an action word. A verb is an action word, which means I should, in theory, be able to observe you listening. So what does listening look like? What am I observing? Here are some ways that you can actually actively listen to your employees. First, consider your body language and tone. It is absolutely amazing how much body language and tone matters. So, for example, I'm here, I'm with you, I'm using body language, I'm maintaining some eye contact, I have tonality in my voice, I'm able to communicate quite a bit. Whereas if I am not on the camera at all and I speak in a low monotone voice, you are already starting to check out. You're like, holy heck, I'm, I already hit the stop button. And if you're still here, good for you, right? That really demonstrates in that teeny tiny little example, the power of body language and vocal tone. Also, reflect when you're speaking. So what I'm hearing you say is, this is a favorite of mine with all of my coworkers and my business partners, is whenever somebody says something, I like to reflect back and restate what they said, but in my own words. That allows them an opportunity to say, yes, you heard me right, or, well, no, What I really kind of meant to communicate, what I meant to say was this, that, and the other. It really allows for a greater level of understanding in a conversation. And ask clarifying questions. We often are hesitant to show that we don't understand something or that something isn't clear. And so we just kind of let it pass, right? No, no. 
ask clarifying questions, dig a little deeper. Now, when you say this, what do you mean? Or now you referred to this situation. Help me understand how that relates to this. Really dig down and get to the meat of the topic. Okay. Now, here are some exercises you might consider. Focus on one active listening practice for a week, then move on to the next and so forth. So write down on a little card, ask clarifying questions or reflect and really practice that. Make it part of your regular listening routine and then each week move on to the next one. Also, meet with your manager and ask them to rate your active listening skills. Get some feedback from somebody whom you trust and figure out, well, how are my active listening skills today? Next one, allow for failure. It's the last one. This is important, folks. Allow for failure. Failure is a treasure chest full of knowledge and learning, the currency of tomorrow's successes. I am very sorry that our culture, and I speak for the culture here in the United States, our culture has really demonized, villainized, just made abhorrent the idea of failure. Failure is the learning process. I mean, none of us knew how to walk from day one. We tried and failed a thousand times. None of us knew to, how to write from day one, speak from day one. Failure is how we learn and develop our competency in a given skill set. So nobody is ever going to do anything perfectly the first time. And yet, when we ask our employees to do things that are outside their comfort zone and they struggle, we're kind of like, I don't know if you're going to be able to hack this. No, we need to really allow for failure and help them along the way. So here's an exercise you can consider. Do something beyond your skill set and fail, then take note of the things you learned and reflect on the process. So allow failure for yourself first. Try something that's outside your comfort zone, fail, assess your feelings, assess what you did wrong, figure out what you need to do to do better next time, and really kind of internalize the fact that failure is simply a dirty way of saying learning and building and growing and developing, which are all good things, right? Think of ways you can celebrate failures with your employees. Yes, celebrate failures. You know, I don't know the full story, so Google it sometime. I ought to put it in here. Um, the post-it note, the glue on the back of a post-it note, that was a failure. The guy was actually trying to develop a really awesome glue, a really hard glue, right, permanent, and it didn't work. But he threw his failure out into the you know company for other researchers to pick up, and somebody else picked it up and said, hey, I've got this post-it idea, right? So his failure ended up being the success of somebody else in the department. So find ways to celebrate and learn from your failures. You never know when they're going to be something awesome later on. Okay? So there you go. You now have a competitive advantage because you know how to build authentic relationships with your employees. So go off do it, do something awesome. And until we talk again, have a fantastic day.